Hi, welcome to The Kate Show. With me today is Avery Guy. How's it going, Avery? Good, how are you? Good, good. So how did you get into martial arts? I was young. It was like 2000, 2001. Mm -hmm. And we watched um, Kung Fu Theater. My dad loved DVDs, and so he has a DVD player. We watched Kung Fu like all weekend long. And um, we start trying to do Kung Fu on each other. Me, oh, my boy. brother, sister. And so, you know, after, you know, got kind of out of hand, they um, they had us take classes. And it was it was different. It wasn't, um, it wasn't as old or as, um, it didn't seem as classic as watching those movies. Mm -hmm. There wasn't the, um, the exaggerated uniforms and stuff like that. And it was more about, um, your personality and your the way you talked and um, there was martial arts there was martial arts there but it was a lot of like uh, socializing or like standing up in front of crowds mm -hmm. and it was different and um, I actually didn't enjoy it as much <laughs> as I thought I would um, <laughs> it was it was weird the first class I had me standing up in front of an audience giving a speech oh boy like, yeah so it was um it was scary but it it kind of helped out a lot with um, school and whatnot i wasn't um particularly bullied or anything but it happened um especially in middle school mm -hmm. so it it did help but it was partially self-defense and partially just our parents getting us to do something instead of fight <laughs> each other so <laughs> <laughs> so how long did it take you to get your black belt i got my black belt first degree in 2004. wow um, so it was about four years yeah i think yeah, and it was it was a long hard journey because as a kid, I um, like I said, I I was there when it was fun, when it was hard, or when it was it required discipline. It was kind of, you know, just off trying to get out of it. There was there was plenty of times where if my parents didn't push me, wouldn't have been there, wouldn't have made it, and I'm I'm actually really happy that they did because the end result was a lot. I I enjoyed it a lot more than if I didn't have it. I don't know what type of life I would have without it and that includes I mean my own personal safety and my family and friends just because of martial arts so yeah so it's influenced your life in a lot of ways oh yes definitely so what was it like when you began doing stunts in movies um it was like coming home because when I was training when I was actually taking classes um eventually somehow I got in charge of the demo team huh. which was something I wasn't really yeah. comfortable with but we did fight skits, we did choreography, we did forms, um, and I was in charge of pushing those out. And so every every month we'd have to have a new one, and it was it was really good because it brought me, my brother, and my dad together, mm -hmm. like for something to do. So we would we would come up with these skits and stuff, and then eventually we the martial arts slowed down. We didn't go as much to work or whatever, and we weren't doing them. Mm -hmm. um, and then as I started doing um, movies. The fixer, um, it, it kind of brought it back together. It was, it was, it felt kind of natural. It's like that's interesting. Yeah. So that's so you were you were doing stuff that's similar to what you're doing now in the movies. You were doing stuff like just for, uh, you know, karate school and stuff. Yeah, it was um, minus the small amount of acting, but yeah, <laughs> it was, <laughs> it was, it was kind of kind of the same. So. That's interesting. So, do you like working with your father and your brother? Yeah. I, I love working with my father and my brother. Um, it's it's one of those things like, you know, uh, some people go fishing with their family, some mm -hmm. people ride bikes or they do a lot of traveling, but kind of thing that brings us together, at least the men in the family, um, is is the fight skits, the training or the sparring, whatever we're doing involving martial arts or kind of like movie type deals. That's interesting. And and lately you've been doing more, well, I mean, Alfred, of course, he was doing the, the fight choreography for Lee Dahl's movies for a long time, and now you're doing more of that, right? Getting into more of the chore choreographing them? Yeah. Um, we, like, once, twice a week we'll get together and we'll, we'll kind of brainstorm mm -hmm. ideas, just things we can do for for whatever, for the movie or for whatever else. But um, I'll... I'm kind of in charge of writing it down. Mm. So I'll we'll do it, and then I'll come and I'll write 
and I'll write out each move, and it gets extensive. Like, I have, it'll be like one exchange, maybe a guy blocks and punches or a sweep or something, and it winds up being a full page because I'm lining up where they're coming from, what hand is doing what, what leg is doing what, and then all the same time I'm drawing up like pictures of what's happening. That's really interesting. Stick figure pictures. Nice. <laughs> Not anything too extensive. <laughs> <laughs> but still, that's, that sounds like it's a lot of work. It can be, but it's one of those things when you enjoy it, it just happens. I start writing and it just the pages they start filling themselves out. It doesn't it really doesn't take up any time or it doesn't feel like work. So That's awesome. Gosh, that is amazing. <laughs> so when you do a fight scene and then you go and you see the movie and you watch the part in the movie where the fight scene takes place, does it usually live up to what you expected? To an extent, yes. Um, it always it always looks good. Mm -hmm. It always looks great. But as personally, when I see myself do stuff, there's always these little things where I'm just like, oh, I should have did this, or this would have been better if I held this longer. It's like I'm always critiquing myself. So it always, it's always amazing to actually see stuff put on the screens when it's when it's done in its final form. It's really it's pristine. It's it's nice. I love looking back on it. But I always have little critiques for myself, just because I always think I can do a little bit better. So. I think that's good, though. I think when, when you stop feeling that, then I think, like, you just won't get any better. Definitely. You know, like, that you're just stagnant at that point. No, that's, I think that's healthy. That's good. So, <laughs> that scene in Dangerous Deception, <laughs> how many times did you have to reshoot that scene where you're punching Paul Seaver in the uh, face? Um, it was, it was quite, it was, it was a couple times. It was a couple times. <laughs> Gloves are not something I'm used to wearing. Oh, we, um, okay. when we sparred, we had we had gloves, but they were a little bit small. They weren't boxing gloves. So m my issue was that I was trying to judge where to stop so it looks real. And so sometimes it was too far, sometimes it was too close. Um, yeah, might have tagged them once. So. Oh, man. <laughs> That's, that is one of the funniest scenes, I think. And I don't think it's, like, intentionally funny, but it just it winds up being really funny. I mean, you look very serious about it. And then Paul Sievers making, like, goofy faces yeah, while he's fun. getting punched and <laughs> that stuff. That was a fun scene. Oh, man. That's just, that's, that is, that's a great scene. And what was it like when you were in that rubber monster suit in this team? Oh, jeez. Um... No embarrassing, because <laughs> it's like me and my dad have this thing where we we read a lot of H.P. Lovecraft. Okay. Those those horror um, fantasy type things, mm -hmm. and but we often get a little like confused on how something is. So when he made the monster, he he created it, and when he kind of reflected on how it should act and what it should do, mm -hmm. I kind of got an idea that wasn't quite what it was supposed to be doing so I was kind of flailing around mm -hmm. looking silly so <laughs> so yeah it was it was fun but it was a little embarrassing no you did great uh, though <laughs> I mean you really did great because it, it you know it's you're be, you're sold on the fact that you know I mean well it, it's a guy in a rubber monster suit yeah, but it's like yeah. You know, I think for the kind of movie that that was, like that sort of like driving kind of movie, mm -hmm. you know, it, it ends up being perfect because it's like a send up to those, you know, those old rubber monster movies and stuff. You did really good. Yeah. I didn't think about it like that. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so how did it feel when you were in Ready for Action and you're doing, you're playing the role of rock mm -hmm. and you were playing alongside Julius Bennett, who was playing jazz and you started out, the role was pretty small. I don't think you had that many lines. How did it feel when that role got expanded? I was extremely nervous Aww. Um, because like I, 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 I personally, um, don't do that great when it comes to like standing on like stages and just like in front of crowds. Mm -hmm. My martial arts training helped me get over that, mm -hmm. so I can I can stand up there, I can look normal, I can I can fake it till I make it, as my instructor told me. But it does it does kind of get to me. So when it expanded, um, I was I was nervous. I didn't know how much it how much how how it would feel. Mm -hmm. Because I, I had never, actually never done any type of acting on this level. So, oh. yeah, I was a little nervous. But I, um, I like to say the staff and uh, Julius, um, everybody kind of made it easier. It was fun. 
so it it's it started kind of nerve wracking, but it I kind of fell into it. And it was just it was just like having fun. That's good. I'm glad that that you you know came around to that way of thinking because you really were very funny. <laughs> and I mean, like even just like saying like like a simple like one or two words or mm-hmm. like, like that part where Julius is is say, talking saying all these words and stuff, and then you just tag on me too. <laughs> yeah. That is like the funniest thing. It's just I mean. You're, I just I think you're very talented. Well, thank you. Yeah. So, what kinds of roles do you hope to play in the future? Um, upcoming, I would like to. Uh, I'm going to be playing in the Tales of the Fixer Three mm-hmm. as the Scarlet Gang. Mm-hmm. I'd like to do more roles like that, um, including the uh, like rock and jazz in the last Fixer movie. Um, I like the the teamwork um, that I have with uh, Julius, but also just in general working in groups. Mm-hmm. Um, it feels good. It's easy to play off each other and get into the um, the mood and the immersion of who you're supposed to be when you have someone else there doing their part. So I, I really do enjoy those. So you like things. sharing the spotlight with other people? Yes, definitely. That's definitely. awesome. Because I'm nervous. <laughs> <laughs> you definitely don't come off this nervous. I've always thought of you as very laid back. So I try. <laughs> yeah, no, you do good. Will you come back on the show again sometime? Of course. This was a lot of fun. Nice. I it. <laughs> yes. All right, now listen, I want you to tune in and turn on every Tuesday right here on The Kate Show where we'll have more exciting guests like Avery Guy. See you next week.